Bible class, we're looking at an example of a flowchart found in uh, Chapter 2 slides. Um, in particular, we're writing a program to write uh, to create the logic to calculate the profit on a car sold. We're going to ask the user to provide two pieces of input, a sale price and the actual purchase price for a car. The program then calculates the profit by subtracting the purchase price from sales and printing it out. And this process continues. It will keep asking for that input and printing out the profit until the user types zero for the sale price. That zero is called a sentinel value and indicates that the user wants to end the program. So some requirements. This program must have a main uh, flowchart, the main logic. Um, but in addition, since this chapter is partially on modularizing your programs, we do break up the logic into three additional modules for housekeeping, detail loop, and end of job module. So let's take a look. Here is a solution for the problem we see on slide 57. The first thing to notice is that we actually have uh, several different flows here. We have the main program flow, housekeeping, detail loop, and then the end of job flow. So over here on the left, the main job flow is really where we want to begin. And the first thing to notice is that it does use the flow charting symbols introduced in Chapter 1. It also introduces a new flow charting symbol for internal module calls, and we'll see that in a moment. So we see the start and the stop indicating the beginning and end of the program. The next thing we see after the program begins is that it does declare some variables for our program. And remember, that's telling the program that these variables exist. One of the major questions that I get as to from students regarding variables is, well, what variables would I pick? I, um, how do I know I need a variable? And a lot of that comes with experience, but a good rule of thumb is when you're getting started, you want to go through your program and look for any input you're collecting and any output that you're uh, displaying for the user and create variables for those things. So you see we have a sale price, a purchase price. We're also going to calculate a profit, so we need a spot to store that data during the duration of the program. So we also have a numeric variable for profit. And that's how we came up with those three. They do have three constants here that are being used for the prompts that we'll see later in the program, as well as the thanks for using the pro this program message that we'll see at the end. So that happens first typically after the start. Then we go into the housekeeping module, and we'll see in a moment that that's uh, just what it sounds like. It does some businessy type items, getting ready for the main part of the program. And the main part of this program is a loop. It, the loop will continue as long as the sale price is not equal to zero. So we have a decision symbol. If the sale price is not equal to zero, we will make a, a call to detail loop. So whereas up here we made a call to housekeeping, which we'll see in a moment what, what happens in the housekeeping module, here we're making a call to the detail loop. And we see that this action loops back around and around again until sale price is zero. Once it is zero, the end of job module is called, and then finally the program stops. So each one of these internal module calls, we do see the definition of them over here on the right-hand side of the slide. The housekeeping modules, the first one we'll start with, if you look in it, all that's really in there are two um, two statements. The first one prompts the user. They're asking the user to provide a sale price, and then that sale price is read in. So understand that this happens before the loop begins, and the reason why we do that is we need a valid sale price so that we can compare it to zero. The detail loop is where the main work of the program is done. So although we have prompted for a sale price, we have not uh, obtained the purchase price. So the first thing that happens in the detail loop is we ask for and read in that purchase price. Now we have everything we need so we can go ahead and calculate the profit by subtracting the purchase price from the sale price and printing it out. These last two statements are necessary because we're using what's called a sentinel controlled loop. We're looping until the user provides a specific value. So therefore the last thing inside the detail that we need to do is prompt and read in the next sale price. That's required. If we don't have that there, we'll get into an infinite loop situation. Um, where we're not asking for the next sale price. So that is necessary. We'll notice that pattern in any Sentinel controlled loop. Notice each one of these modules has a return indicating when they're called in the main program flow, they return back to their caller.